love left, I'll do right by you I'll be your everything, your blue sky Welcome back to the Professional Step Dad Show. I am your host, Franco Zavala. Thank you guys once again for joining me on today's episode, Thursday Q&A. Um, this is episode 125. Um, today's question was sent to us over Instagram. Um, he, well, it's a, it's, pretty, it's a pretty great question. Um, sent to us by a gentleman named Anthony. So Anthony... First of all, thank you very much for reaching out to us. We really appreciate it. If you have questions, if you have um, ideas that you think that can benefit other stepdads, please send us an email here, contact at theprofessionalstepdad.com um, or you know, message us on our social media platforms and we will not only get to it, but we, we will respond. And then um, we'll make episodes out of it because remember this is an information-based podcast. So the objective always will be to uh, put out the information that we believe that would be beneficial for stepdads, no matter what part of the journey you're in, whether you're just starting, whether you're 10 years in, or whether you are like a pre-stepdad, meaning like you've joined the family, you love your partner, the, and, and you really see yourself being the leader of that home. So um, yeah, connect with us over, over social media or you know, send us an email and we will gladly respond. Okay, so Anthony sent us a question about um, about his journey as a stepdad. So I'm going to read it to you, and then we'll, I'll tell you kind of like how the conversation went. So, hello, sir. I started listening to your your show last week uh, when my wife found it, and I started in episode one, and I have started to do the work necessary. Congratulations, Anthony. That's perfect. Great answer. Um, my son is 16, and my and my uh, girls are 10 and 4. My oldest two are from my wife's old, uh, my wife's previous relationship. So, honestly, our relationship has strained due to um, me trying to, to be the father figure from, from the beginning. I was excited to be there for them. But over the last two years, it's just caused a strain. You talk about being more vulnerable to them. My question is, when I talk to the kids, it's like they're not interested in what I'm saying. And then when I'm done, they go straight to their room. Um, I want peace and happiness in our home. Any tips, any advice? Anthony, thank you very much again for sending us, uh, sending us this question. It's very, very relevant. It's very, very common that, you know, when you begin your journey as a stepdad, we all have this vision, we all have this idea how we want it to go. And it, it kind of starts off two different ways. It'll either start off really great because everybody's excited to have you there, or it'll start off really rocky because nobody's excited to have you there and they want you gone. So they are going to test your limits anyway and any way they can. That, that doesn't just include the kids, that includes the family members and friends and neighbors and shit. So, being the father figure, being the leader. I like how you say that, Anthony, father figure, meaning the individual within the home that everybody can depend on, somebody that shows up, somebody that's there, somebody that is available emotionally um, and physically. And I love how you, how you I, I'm just saying I love how you phrase that. I love how you, how you word that. Um, so you say it's taking a strain on your relationship. I'm assuming, I'm just gonna kind of answer it both ways. It's either taking a strain on your relationship with you and your partner or you, or you and your wife or you and, your, uh, you and the kids. I'm gonna say it's the kids because when you say you have conversations with them, they listen to what you have to say and then they move on, close the door and then they really want nothing to do with you. So right off the bat, Anthony, um, as a stepdad, it is not our job to be the yes men. It is not our job to give them everything they want. It's not our job, and it's not even our job to necessarily be the voice of reason or, you know, basically kind of just say what they want to hear. Now, if you're sharing your day or you're sharing some information and they're kind of just nodding along and then they don't really recognize it or acknowledge it and they move on because they show no real interest in the conversation, then I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, do you know the proper ways to communicate with the kids? So this is the information that I gave Anthony and he kind of ran with it. And, and we ended up concluding that 
it all stems back to communication, understanding the love languages. Now, I said this in a, in a, in a seminar the other day where I said love languages and I saw a few, a few men roll their eyes because I used the word love and languages. And it's this preconceived notion of that word or that phrase or what I said that made it seem a little, uh, I don't know, weak or uh, you know, feminine or however, you, however they were looking at it, but they rolled their eyes. And so I asked them, I said, what is your hang up with this love languages? And they're like, you know, it's not really for me. Well, you know, your generation kind of ran things different, maybe. Uh, my generation definitely did. But understanding the love languages just simply means that you were doing the necessary work to figure out how to communicate properly with the individual. So like I've said in previous episodes, if your love language is quality time and you're communicating with gifts, it's not gonna work. Trust me when I tell you this, kids, kids can be jerks of course, but they want you there and they're gonna test you. And if they don't seem interested, it's because, you know, it's like I said, it's just a test. You just haven't found the proper, like common ground to talk to them with. So you got to take a step back. And this is, you know, the advice that we gave Anthony, which is take a step back, learn, learn your love language. I mean, you're already doing the work on you and that's amazing, but learn their love languages, learn yours, learn your wife's, learn the kids. And then I want you to just work on you and your wife. At the end of the day, you have to remember that the kids are watching. And if you're doing the work, and if you're treating mom a certain way and your relationship is kind of just, just kind of humming along and you guys are really getting along and you're, and the way you talk to her and the way you greet her or the way you tell her goodbye, everybody, the kids are watching. The kids are noticing. This is, this is what you're wanting to do. You're wanting to drop these little pieces of, you know, these nuggets of quality information in their head so they can see the type of man leader and mentor that you are. And then you slowly begin to learn who they are. Now, kids are gonna change and they evolve, right? As they get older, they like different music, they like they hang out with different people, their interests are different. So their love language doesn't necessarily change dr drastically, but it does alter or it, it kind of, it could move a different way, especially if they're like on that line of, you know, quality time and, and, and acts of service, let's just say, as an example. You know, if they're kind of in the middle but they're kind of like both as they get older, they are going to be pushed from one side of the, they're going to be pushed to one side or the other because it's going to just, you know, it's going to wreck, it's going to resonate with them. So, um, you got to just listen. Kids are going to tell you what they want. Anthony, you already know this. Kids are going to tell you what they want and you, you can't try to solve their problems. If they had a day and and you want to interject a piece of information that you believe that'll help them grow, if you haven't done the necessary work to communicate with them the proper way, then that piece of information will just sound like nagging to them or they'll sound like, geez, are you even listening to me? You'll get stuff like that. Or you'll get what Anthony was getting, which is head nods and to the rooms. So I highly recommend it to Anthony that he take a step back and learn the love languages so he can properly understand how to communicate with the kids. Here's the beautiful part. When you understand your love language too, you'll understand why you act and react a certain way towards communication when it comes to the kids or your wife. Best way, I can, best example I can give you is my, my love language is words of affirmation. So my wife goes out of her way to just not just give me like that. You're being, you know, we're so grateful for you or man, you're such a good dad. Like little things like that. Yes. I love that. Don't get me wrong. I love that. I love all of that. But I also love it when my wife, uh, drops in on an episode and, and leaves a comment or says something like, I'm so proud of you or just something simple like that. That really goes a long way. Just like my wife's love language is physical touch. And I'm, and I have to make more of a conscious effort to, just graze her, touch her, shoulders, kiss, you name it, right? This is what fills her heart. This is what fills her love tank, which will just make your day hum along a lot better. So, you know, Anthony, first and foremost, congratulations. Congratulations, man. Just for not only being there, for staying there, for stepping up, for, for reaching out. I mean, this is big, dude. You don't understand how big this is. You, the fact that you're reaching out shows that you're trying. It shows that you care. It shows that you're not just a shell. It shows that you actually have a heart. You have, 
you, you want to be better, you want to do better, and you are actively seeking out ways to get better. And that in itself is amazing for any man to do. To ask for help is incredible. So get that, get that book, get the Love Languages book. Really study it. Remember, don't jump to the kids just yet. Understand yours first, then understand you and your wife's. Then jump to the kids. And when you jump to the kids, do it in a nice, quiet manner. Don't let them know you're reading the book. Kind of interject a few things here and there, and then just start taking notes. I'm telling you, the kids will tell you everything you need to know if you would just listen. Don't solve, just listen. I promise it will work each and every time because I've done it, it works. And I'm so grateful that I even found that book because out of any step parenting book that there possibly could be out there, the pillars of this and the levels of that, the love languages speaks volumes when it comes to family. And, um, and that will help you increase your chances of not just survival, stepdad, but success. So again, Anthony, thank you very much for sending in those questions. Once again, if you have a question, um, if you have a comment, please send us an email at contact at the We'd be more than happy to, um, maybe, Hey, maybe we're gonna make an episode about it. Uh, make sure to follow us on all social media accounts, the professional stepdad. And once again, everyone, we're so happy, grateful, blessed, and thankful for each and every one of you who has subscribed to the show, who watches the show, who listens to the show. Um, we will do everything in our power to make sure that we deliver the best information that we can for the stepdads and the stepmoms out there who are wanting to be the very best that they can be. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. Listen, if you know a stepdad who is in need of any of this information, do me a favor right now. Hit that subscribe button and share this episode with them as fast as possible. Did you do it? You, okay, you did it. Quiet on the set, please. Thank you, everybody.